Okay, this is how I do a floor fade in CSX. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and create a new layer. And I'm going to choose a large soft brush. About that size should do. And then I'm going to use my color picker and come over here and choose a color real close to the subject. That way when I mask off, um, the background is going to be very similar to what was there previously. Um, so when I mask off, you won't be able to see it as well if I make any mistakes masking or get a little sloppy with it. So that color looks good. So I'm going to just come over here and really make sure I grab the fill in the background pretty well. And then once I've got the background all filled in, I'm going to just kind of dab down like this to kind of get that floor faded in. And you can go even more faded or a little less if you want. Um, if I were to have chosen a less firm brush, then you wouldn't have quite so much overspray here on the floor. Um, but I kind of like that. That kind of keeps the color consistent across the whole image. That way the background and the floor are both going to have the same tint um, or the same hue. So, um, but if you want to see more detail on your floor, then definitely use a um, either a smaller brush or use one that's a little bit more firm. So anyways, okay, but this works good for the picture that I chose here. So and I'm going to come over here and create a layer mask. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can see her better to mask off. And since I have so much coverage on her, it's just too hard to get up here and see what, you know, to mask off of her head. So I'm going to come over here and lower the opacity of that layer. There, now I can see a little bit better. I'm going to choose just kind of a medium-sized, medium-firm brush, probably something like this, and just do a quick and dirty job. Maybe through here and get the majority of her masked off. Then I'm going to come over here and get a smaller brush and make sure that it's still somewhat firm. That way um, I'm not grabbing a lot of the background. Um, so then I'm going to come over here and just grab the details around the edges. And when I'm going over here on the shadow side, I mean on the highlight side, I'm not as, um, I'm a little bit more sloppy. I'm not quite as careful uh, because it's, it's the background's going to be really close to that. The original background's pretty close to the color that we painted anyway, so it's not going to be too noticeable, but once I make it over here to the shadow side, it's going to be a little more noticeable because the um, the original background is a little bit darker than what we painted. So this side I have to be more careful with. Okay, there was a there, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so once I think I've got her all good there, I'm going to just go ahead back over here and raise the opacity of the layer. Double check. Oh, see, I missed a spot right here in her ear. Let's grab that. A little up here in the hair here in the leg. And then I got pretty sloppy over here. This is where I was saying um, to be real careful with the masking on the shadow side because you're going to be able to see it and you can't. So I'm just going to flip back over to my white brush, make it a little bit smaller. And then I'll just go back over here and fill back in. So there you have it. And then I'm going to, oh wait, I see one more spot here I missed. Still being a Perfectionist, I am, and I can fix it. Okay, that should be about it. Let's zoom back out, take a peek, make sure we got everything. Yep, looks good to me. So from there, I would just start my regular processing. That's it.